right. Here in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to build an insect collection, how to keep these insects that you take from the field and preserve them in such a way that you can share them with others. Um, this is commonly done, um, especially in the academic world, but a lot of amateur entomologists out there as hobbyists make these collections and they can be really quite beautiful. So I encourage all of you at some point uh, to try this. Um, it's fun to do with a group of people as well. You can often get more insects that way, but definitely try to build an insect collection at one point or another. Um, so we'll talk about a number of things, but we want to start on actually how do we begin to process individual insects. Um, each, each insect order kind of has its own approach when it comes to pinning. Um, pinning is a common way to keep a lot of insects on one surface and you can see them all next to each other and they don't move that way. They're not falling around inside of a box or something like that. Pinning is just the way to go and kind of the standard. So with each order, you will kind of learn how to place these little penny needles through the insect and where on the insect that's appropriate. Uh, we're looking at hemipterans, so this option B here, this is like a stink bug. Um, a lot of our hemipterans look a little different, but in general, we talked about scutellum, this um, anatomical structure here, this triangle behind the pronotum, which is this shoulder blade area. So the scutellum, you aim there, and up into the top right, just off center is where you would stab the penny needle through. And usually you want to do that over like a something, a surface that you wouldn't mind the pin going through and stabbing. You don't want that to be your finger always. After you get accustomed to it, maybe you can do that, especially if you learn how to do the pinning really slowly. But at first I would recommend doing it over like a piece of foam or something. Careful not to push too hard, breaking legs and things like that. You can usually ease the pin through the exocuticle and then it's pretty easy once you've gotten through the exocuticle of the um, insect. Um, to know where on the needle you want to keep the insect, I recommend getting a pinning block, especially if you're going to be doing quite a few insects at a time for a collection. You can get these blocks on um, BioQuip or other insect related websites. And it, they already have these steps here for set heights. So you'll do the insect at the highest point on the pinning needle and then the labels would come at subsequent levels below the insect. And you want to make sure that you have the insect really nice and level uh, pinned through. If it's too low on the pin or crooked, it can turn out bad and you might end up damaging the insect in the long term. So right here at the height that the penny block shows you and um, really level so that you can see the insect well from above. Um, and I recommend size two pins and insect pins come in a variety of sizes, but that's about 0 .40, 0 0.45 millimeters, but size two, it's a standard pen size. Look that up. It does a lot of things well. There's also the ability to point mount for smaller um, hemipterans that you might find. And um, essentially you have a small triangular piece of paper that's on a pin and uh, the insect is glued with like nail polish sealer or other adhesives uh, with a very small amount of residue of that adhesive and uh, just touch the tip of that triangle with the insect and it'll glue right on there. And that's a really good method for smaller things that you can't fit the pin through. So yeah, pinning's great. Go try it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's not always plain and simple though. Sometimes you want to actually pin the insect and the insect has large wings, like in the case of Lepidopterans or Coleoptera on this slide and in that case you'd want to spread them on a spreading board which can be wood classically or um, a lot of newer techniques use styrofoam where there's a groove in the center of this rectangular piece of foam and you set the body of the insect down in that groove and the wings go on the lateral parts of the pinning board and then you use pins with little pieces strips of paper to pin the wings down you can bring wings up by kind of using the point of a pin, lightly dragging the upper vein, upper side edge of the wing up to what level you want. And then with pressure of those uh, paper um, strips, you can keep the wing pushed down and the insect will then dry in that position. The, really, the only thing we need to do to preserve insects is to let them dry. 
after being frozen or taken out of ethanol or something like that. And so you have a few moments where the insect is pliable while it's still moist, and then you pin it like this, spread it like this, and let it dry in that position. Take all of the braces off after you know, 24 to 48 hours, and then you can have the one original pin in the center of the body remain and put that into your drawer or your shadow box or wherever you have your insects and uh, looks beautiful and more natural that way, especially with butterflies. Um, so labels, pretty straightforward. Usually there's um, one or two, sometimes three labels. Um, like I said, the height of the label can be dictated by your pinning block, as we talked about earlier. What is really pertinent information is the location. Um, you can get really specific or keep it broad. Depends on your format selected for your particular collection. But usually there's you know something about which country, state, or county it was in. You could even have information on the city. Um, and then coordinates are, are a nice thing to add as well if you can get that off your smartphone or another application or a GPS device. And then anything about where it was trapped, how you trapped it, and who you are, what's your name. Um, that way someone can possibly contact you about more information when they look at your collection. Um, and these are kept at different heights so that you can see them simultaneously. You can also alternate how they're oriented on the pin so you can read both. Um, yeah, so I, I would encourage you to go look up insect labels online. There's a lot of formats that you can actually download as Excel spreadsheets and they're ready to go. Um, the smaller the font size on Microsoft Excel, the better. Um, you can print really, really small font still pretty clearly. I recommend using a thicker cardstock. Uh, that way your labels will last a long time. Um, and this is a fancy new system of QR codes that essentially a lot of people are using to make massive collections. So if you ever see these labels that have a QR code, that's probably for something at the Smithsonian or a really large collection, but a super effective tool as well. And if you can use it on your collection, do it. That's really cool. Um, and some final notes here um, beyond what we've already talked about is once you've got everything pinned and preserved and you're ready to actually put all of your insects together into a collection, there's a number of ways you can do that. You want to be sure that whatever you're storing them in is a cool, dry place out of direct sunlight. Um, a sealed a compartment is nice so that wind or, you know, pests and other things that are around the house don't knock the insects off or anything like that. Um, protection against domestics, I have that listed because there are these domestic beetles, they're a family of beetles, that will actually get into your collection and feed on your preserved insects, which is really ironic, right? Um, so you want to keep your insect collection pretty sealed. Keep the edges of the lid sealed with, like, you know, you could have a clear tape. Um, there's a number of things you could do there, but that helps. Also, sometimes you can put fumigants in there, but a lot of people don't like that, so. Um, and then you want to think about what are your viewing capabilities? Do you want this to be, you know, a shadow box where you can hang it on the wall, like we have over here with this really cool large phasmid? Um, or do you want it to be a, like a larger, more utilitarian collection in something like a Bioquip like Cornell drawer. Um, Bioquip makes these Cornell drawers and you can buy them. I've made them myself too. If you can make a picture frame at home with the tools you have in your wood shop, you can make an insect uh, drawer pretty easily too. Um, but yeah, Cornell drawers are an excellent thing because they have a big lid that comes off the top that's glass. You can view them and get to them pretty easily that way. And usually there's styrofoam in the bottom um, that you can actually pin the insects into. There's also, like we talked about, shadow boxes. Riker mounts are very similar to shadow boxes, more for highlighting one or two larger insects or smaller collections and things like that. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to collect insects, even outside of what I've just mentioned. So be creative and uh, go out and pin some insects and uh, enjoy yourself with that. I think that's what I have for you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day and enjoy the BioBlitz.